So the Asian swing underway and a lot of players playing Labor Cup this week. Not too many changes to the rankings on the men's side of things, but on the women's side, we had a big result in Guadalajara. We did play in Mexico as well over the week, so let's go have a look at who actually won last week. So we just actually got to bear in mind, there is a couple of tournaments that are being played at the moment in China on the men's side, so we don't have those results yet. But on the women's side, starting in Guadalajara, Maria Sacri finally gets that big trophy, 7-5-6-3. She beats Dollarhide in the final. Very good week from Dollarhide as well, but Sacri... It was her week. And over in China, Wong beats Lynette in the final of a 250 event, 6-love, six 6-2, six to lift her first WTA trophy. So the first time winner of a big trophy at home and also a massive 1,000 event for Sakri. It was great to see. Such a heartwarming moment for her and it was great to see. But she got a boost in the rankings. Let's go have a look at the players that have gone up in the rankings this week, thanks to good results last week as a ranker. She's back in the top 20, went up six spots to number 17 in the world after a quarterfinal in Guadalajara. Sophia Kennan, she made the semifinals of Guadalajara and went up 22 spots to number 31 in the world, and she is climbing up fast. And Dollarhide, she's at a career high number 42 in the world, 69 spots higher than last week after making the final of Guadalajara. So massive results there and some massive jumps for some key players. Players went down in the rankings. Samson over. She's gone five spots down to number 22 in the world after losing a lot of points this week. Mardich, she's gone down 10 spots, number 49 in the world. And Andrescu, she's gone down seven spots, number 70 in the world after losing points from this time last year. So not too many big drops. And also, as I mentioned, not too many results on the men's side to speak of yet. So next week, we'll talk about the men's ranking a lot more, but they're the players that have gone up and down this week. All right, let's start with the WTA rankings because there have been some changes, but no change to the top five with Sabalenka still number one. Sviantec in action this week. She's at number two with Goff at three, Pagula at four, and Rabakina at five. Three of those five players are playing this week in Japan. So we'll see what happens with that. But we do have a change to the bottom half of the top 10. Wondrusova goes down two spots to number eight, making way for Sakari, who's back into the top six after winning Guadalajara. She goes up three spots into that sixth spot. Jabir stays in the middle there at number seven. Mukaba also got pushed down to number nine and a change in the very bottom with Garcia getting back in the top 10 after a week off or a week out of the top 10, pushing Kujikova out of the top 10 due to the fact that she didn't play last week. So a couple of changes there and great to see Zachary, like I said, getting that big trophy and really boosting her rankings, getting back into the top of the game. Going over to the WTA finals now and still only four players have qualified with Sabalenka, Fiontek, Goff, and Rabakina. Pagula can really help her chances this week of qualifying if she plays well in Japan. Wondrusova, she's still at number six with Mukova at number seven. Both of those players are not playing this week, so they've got to be careful that they do play at least the 1,000 event in Beijing in a couple of weeks. Otherwise, they could risk falling out of the top eight. Jabir is playing this week as well, and she's at number eight. We have a change at the bottom with Zachary going up seven spots into that number nine spot, pushing Keys down to number 10 and Kvitova out of the top 10 completely. So Zachary really making a run for the WTA finals where she made the semifinal last year. So she does have some points to defend, but winning Guadalajara really helped her chances. And she's playing this week in Japan. So there's a possibility if she does well again, that she could make it into that top eight, depending on what happens with Entrebeur. So some real changes. And of course, we've only got about three or four weeks left of the WTA season before the WTA finals. So it's getting really serious now. Jumping over to the men's side of things and no changes because of course we do have events going on right now. Djokovic number one with Alcaraz at number two. Alcaraz is playing this week. So we're going to see what he does and see if he can close the gap with Djokovic. Mev Medvedev stays at number three with Runa at four, City Pass at five, Rublev. He's at number six after playing at Labor Cup this week with Sinner at seven. Fritz at number eight also played Labor Cup this week with Rude at number nine, who also played Labor Cup this week, but of course, no points given to those players. And Zverev, little asterisk next to his name because he is still playing this week and currently at number 10. He can't go any higher than that anyway, so Zverev does have some points potentially to add to his total next week. That's why there's an asterisk, but no change to the top 10 as most of the players either didn't play or they played the Labor Cup. Going over to the race of the finals now, and again, only three players qualified with Djokovic, Alcaraz, Medvedev all going to Turin at the end of the year. Sinner's not far behind at number four with Rublev at number five. City Pass at six. We do have a change in the middle. And again, with an asterisk next to Zverev's name, he will go up to number seven, pushing Runa down to number eight in the race of the finals. And he could still add more points because of course he is playing this week and he's in the semi-final at the moment. So if he does win the title, in China this week, he'll get even closer to City Pass there. So Zverev really helping his chances with a good result this week. Fritz just outside of the top eight at number nine. And Kasper Ruud rounds out the top 10 for this week in the finals race. And again, not too many tournaments left for the ATP. With the ATP finals happening in about six weeks or so. So there it is. They are the rankings for this week. No changes to the men's really. 
We're just going to wait for some results to come in, but there's a lot of the men playing next week. Of course, the Asian swing. Djokovic won't be playing, but everyone else will be. So it's going to be interesting to see if there's any changes to the rankings over the next couple of weeks for the men. On the women's side, they're all trying to qualify for the Mexico WTA Finals. They're playing Cancun, of course. Uh, some good results there. Of course, great to see Sakura getting that win, but let me know down in the comments below. How did you like the week of rankings? I mean, no rankings really for the men because of Labor Cup. Did you watch the Labor Cup? Did you like the Labor Cup? What about Guadalajara? Did you like watching that and love seeing Sakura get the win? But no big changes on the men's side of things, but on the women's side, things are starting to get serious for that WTA Finals.